Welcome back to Northeast Current. My name is James May, and I'm the Regional Press Director for the Pennsylvania Department of Transportation. My name is Mike Toludo. I'm the Safety Press Officer for PennDOT. In the words of that old Christmas song, from Atlantic to Pacific, gee, the traffic is terrific. And this is that time of the year where we're seeing a lot of cars on the road. And we're down here on Lackawanna Avenue in Scranton, where there's not only a lot of cars on the road for the Thanksgiving time, but there's also a lot of shoppers who are going to be parking and walking around this area. And so we want to take just a few minutes to talk about how we can keep people safe on the roads this holiday season. Mike, this is a time of year where right here in the Scranton area especially, um, near us is going to be a new movie theater that's coming in. We have the, uh, the Steamtown Mall right here. There's a lot of people that will be down here uh, doing holiday shopping. And one of the concerns that we have uh, seen recently is that there's been a lot of pedestrian uh, accidents, not only right here, but around the Scranton area. As the safety press officer for PennDOT, what are we seeing and what can motorists be doing to try to keep people safe so we don't have any more of these pedestrian crashes? Well, motorists have to be aware of the peop their, their surroundings, take a time and watch the people when they cross the street, and we just want to be aware that there's been several crashes in Scranton where pedestrians have been hit, one fatal, which is very sad news. But we do have tips where we could give people uh, tips for uh, being aware when they're crossing the street. Now, if I'm a pedestrian, um, obviously one of the things I know we need to make sure that we do these days is put down the, the phone and pay attention to what you're Oh, absolutely. Doing. We see people walking, not even paying attention, just walking out there and, and just walking out there not paying attention. So that's one thing. The phones, the earplugs, also. But one, what are some of the other tips that we would have for pedestrians to make sure that they are doing what they can to make sure that they're being safe? One tip is to cro cross only at the crosswalk. So the crosswalks that are in the middle of the street, make or in the corner of the street, make sure you use the crosswalk. And I know a lot of times it's tempting if you want to run from the middle of the block across the street um, to just kind of shoot across there real, real quick, but that's many times when we see uh, accidents happening when people are not crossing at the designated crosswalks. What are some of the other tips for Okay, we have wait for a gap in traffic, then step one foot off the curb fully enter the crosswalk and make eye contact with the approaching drivers. And I think that's important because that's how you, sh you signal to the oncoming cars that one, I am in the crosswalk and I'm not just someone who's standing here watching the cars go by, but I'm actually in the crosswalk wanting to cross. And the second part that you said about that, making sure that you make eye contact with the cars, um, legally, technically, uh, a person in the crosswalk has the right of way when they're crossing. But if you are laying in a hospital bed, or even worse, you know, you've been injured or killed, and you try to make the argument, yes, I, I was injured, but I still, I, I technically had the right of way, it doesn't really do you a lot of good. Absolutely. So, so make sure that you make that eye contact. What else? Look left, right, and then left again, and keep looking. Okay, so left first, left, right, left. Okay. Always obey traffic signals and signs. Never try to beat the light. Okay, so make sure that you have plenty of time when you head out, and that there's... Um, that you're not rushing to try to get across that light. And if you might be a little bit slower uh, as you walk or maybe you move with a, uh, a walker or a cane, make sure that you try to get out at the beginning of the light so you're not, you know, with three seconds left, think you're going to shoot across real quick. Okay, we have one watched for turning vehicles at intersections, even if you have the right of way and are proceeding lawfully. And again, I, I think many times people will, they want to go across and so they think of, of looking left and right here like on Lackawanna Avenue, but you don't think that there might be cars that are turning from one of the directions. So make sure that you're looking not only at the, car, at the road you're crossing, but the, the uh, intersecting roads as well. Anything else? There's, yeah, there's one more. One. Yeah, one. Watch your, ch watch your children. Children can't judge a vehicle's speed and distance and need the help of an adult to be safe. So children, when they're crossing the street, they should be accompanied by an adult. And I always say to those of us who are the motorists, um, to make sure, even if you, at a point, you know, if, if you see a, someone coming out and maybe crossing where they shouldn't be, especially in this area where there are a lot of teenagers, um, as the dad of teenagers, I know that many times they may not be um, thinking in the same way that we wish they would if they were an adult. So many times children or teens uh, will end up doing things that maybe they shouldn't do, but it's our responsibility as parents to make sure that we are going that extra step. And so even if we see somebody crossing where they should not be crossing, uh, make sure that we are aware and always looking out for children, uh, especially now with the, like I said before, with the, with the mall right here, with Christmas shopping taking place in the future, with the, with the movie theater coming in here, there's gonna be a lot of pedestrian activity in downtown Scranton, but especially right here on this corner. So please be careful out there when you're looking and watch for pedestrians on the roads, uh, not only in Scranton, but across the whole area. 
Next, we're going to take a look at the legal side of things. One of the things that I found out recently is that one of the highest uh, times for alcohol-related crashes is actually at Thanksgiving time. So we're going to talk to some folks from the DA's office and see what we can do from a legal side to make sure we're safe this holiday season. Welcome back to Northeast Current. We were talking before about the tips that motorists can take and that pedestrians can take and we can give tips all day long and just remind and encourage uh, people to be safe on the roads but unfortunately sometimes the best way to do that is uh, and through the enforcement side of things. I'm here with Shane Scanlon. He is one of the deputy uh, district attorneys here in Lackawanna County. I understand you guys are currently doing a, a number of investigations. I know you can't talk about the specifics of those, but when you do investigations and you're out looking at, especially like pedestrian uh, incidents that would take place, what are some of the kind of general things that you would see um, that contribute to pedestrian uh, accidents that take place on the roads? I, I think one of our biggest things, honestly, James, is that people are always in a hurry and, and primarily distracted. Uh, you know, unfortunately, everyone has a cell phone in their car now, and everyone that you see walking is usually carrying a cell phone in their hand. So their priorities aren't traffic coming at them or pedestrians crossing the road. It, it's, you know, who's calling them or who's texting them or, or what they're going to do for lunch. How about from the, the motorist side, and even as we're talking here, I'm, I'm watching people cross Lackawanna Avenue, not going at the, um, at the crosswalks. Um, we were talking before that, you know, people end up saving 30 seconds. I mean, we, we just saw somebody cross right here in front of us. Um, could have easily, you know, maybe they didn't want to be on TV, but could have easily walked down here and taken an extra 30 seconds. As you see that, what are some of the implications that when somebody ends up not taking that extra 30 seconds, um, what are what are you guys seeing from, from that as far as the implications of that? Unfortunately, we, we recently had a fatality. Uh, a pedestrian was struck by a motor vehicle and passed away. Uh, we have several open investigations now where people crossing the street have been struck by cars. The seconds that you're going to save don't amount to the time you're going to spend in jail or the time that you're going to spend away from your family if you're in a hospital bed. And we were talking before that sometimes people want to almost prove a point by saying, well, I have the right of way, so uh, I, I have every right to step out here. And, and legally, you may be right, but if you're going to court in a full body cast, it really doesn't do you a whole lot of good um, to, to be, or even worse, if you end up getting killed. Um, Anything else just from your office uh, as far as what you're doing and what are you guys doing to try to um, help from the enforcement side of things? Well, what we're doing is we're, we're going to prosecute those drivers or those pedestrians to the fullest extent of the law. If, if you run a light and strike a pedestrian, you're, you're going to be facing very serious charges. If someone dies as a result of it, you're going to be looking at homicide charges. So you could face homicide charges for inadvertently hitting somebody if, you, if you're found to be at fault? If you're violating the motor vehicle code, really? yes. Okay, it's a very, very critical type of things. And you know, when we look at this thing, um, I, I, I always say with with issues like this, it, it's one thing to go home and say, okay, right before Christmas, I was handed a couple hundred dollar fine, and you know, here goes the Christmas money that I was going to spend on a, a new phone or whatever it was, and it's now being given over to law enforcement because I did something. If you worse than that, if you end up doing something like you said and you end up in jail and or you end up killing somebody and um, your Christmas is then spent knowing that you have taken somebody else's life. I mean, you know, a fine is one thing, but to end up having that hang over your head is just, I, I cannot even begin to fathom what that would be like to, to, to live with that for the rest of my life. And it, and it ruined a lot of lives. I, and I'm sure that you guys see it quite often, unfortunately, Un in your office. Unfortunately, we do. Well, next we're going to be talking from uh, to someone else here from your office, talking about what you guys are doing just from the enforcement side of stuff. There's some crackdowns that are coming up, I understand. We're going to talk to somebody about that and just to kind of get a, a feel for what we can be watching. We won't get into specifics. We don't want to give that away. But um, just kind of what we can be watching for here and what uh, you guys are doing in conjunction with other law enforcement to make sure that we're safe this holiday season. Welcome back to Northeast Current. My name is James May and I'm the Regional Press Director for PennDOT. And I'm here with Brian Gallagher. Brian, you're the Assistant DA for one of the Assistant DAs for Lackawanna County. Um, tell us a little bit about your role and what you do for the county. Um, one of my responsibilities is to help investigate, uh, charge and prosecute uh, pedestrian deaths, uh, mo um, motor vehicle deaths, whether it be um, negligence or uh, whether someone's under the influence of alcohol or drugs. And it's our responsibility to charge, 
uh, do a crash reconstruction, and then ultimately prosecute that case in front of a jury. You know, when we were talking before we went on air, we were saying that the time between essentially Thanksgiving all the way through Christmas and then up through um, New Year's is a very, very high time for crashes. What would be some of the contributing factors that time of this time of year? It seems like there's more crashes taking place. What's contributing to that? Well, outside of, of people getting together and having parties and impaired driving, um, it's completely different conditions when you hit right now. About 5 o'clock it gets dark, you have poor roads because of the weather, you have dim lighting, um, and you have people, again, who are, uh, are, are going out and having fun with people they haven't seen for a while that are in for the holidays, and they think that one beer is okay or two beers is okay and they could drive, but it's not. I tell you, I personally, when I think of Thanksgiving, I do not think of that as a real high alcohol time because it's not sort of the real party atmosphere, like a New Year's party. You know, I think of that as being a high alcohol time. But we were saying before that really the, the night before Thanksgiving, and I think it's probably because so many people are getting together and, and it's not like we're going to go out and have a big drinking party. We just get together as a family, we're watching some football games and people just mm -hmm. end up drinking. And you were saying that that's actually one of the higher times for alcohol related crashes is actually mm -hmm. Thanksgiving. Right. right? Thanksgiving is everyone from out of town comes in because you're giving thanks for your, having your family. They get together, they have a couple of libations, and um, the night before Thanksgiving is without a doubt in, in northeastern Pennsylvania, uh, this probably the first or second uh, highest rate of, of people drinking uh, other than St. Patrick's Day. Yeah, same. So that, that's probably uh, one of the things that really scares us as law enforcement officer and people who prosecute individuals who are driving drunk. And, and, you know, for those of us who think of it as kind of this hallmark, picturesque mm -hmm. type of holiday, we don't think of it in those terms. And you, you kind of alluded to it before, when you combine the alcohol with the fact that so many people are driving on roads that they're not that familiar with because they're from out of town, the, it's getting dark much earlier, you have that. Even the fact that, you know, the day after, the Monday after Thanksgiving mm -hmm. is, is the first day of deer hunting. So you have deer running all over the place, um, the road, road conditions, uh, you have either leaves or snow on the ground or a combination. Kind of, it's this perfect storm for um, things that would contribute to crashes. Because of that, um, there are some things that cannot be controlled from the law enforcement. Obviously, you guys have no control over the, the condition of the roads and snow and that mm -hmm. type of stuff. But I know that you are doing a lot of crackdowns to try to, to do what we can to control mm -hmm. the things that can be controlled. What do you guys do from your office to try to cut down on the number of crashes? Listen, if we knew when people were going to go out and drink and drive, we'd stop them beforehand. Yeah. But it's our goal uh, to take pre preventative measures. And that would be, for this holiday season, probably starting right the week before Thanksgiving through New Year's is to set up uh, with the local uh, township and boroughs along with the state police roving patrols to detect impaired drivers um, as well as uh, the potential for DUI checkpoints in certain critical areas where we have high volume of pedestrian or other, mo or other motor vehicle crashes and we hope that uh, it saves a life. Uh, I think the most important thing again is uh, prevention and um, we just hope that people realize that one drink is not worth ruining your holiday or ruining somebody else's holiday by hitting and killing somebody. And I think a lot of times there's this misconception that the reason we're out there is because we just want to catch the people that are doing wrong. It's really not so much for the people that are doing wrong as it is for those who are not doing wrong to keep them safe on the roads. And, and I, I, I've said this before, I'm an Iraq war veteran, you know, spent some time over in the Middle East in Iraq. The scariest day of my life was the day that I watched my oldest son get in his car, go drive down the driveway and hang a left at 16 years old. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, I'm, I'm scared for him, you know, thinking here's a new driver, I'm, I'm afraid for him. But then I'm also afraid thinking all of these other people that are on the roads right now, I'm putting essentially his life into their hands. And so what you guys are doing is trying to keep the innocent safe. Exactly. It's almost an oxymoron. You're trying to control what you can't control. You can't control yeah. somebody going out and drinking and then operating their vehicle impaired. Um, but we're doing our best. We have tremendous support from all of our local law enforcement, the state police, the Scranton police, uh, and all the other towns and boroughs. Um, and we're going to be out there and we're trying to protect people. I think if you talk to people who are involved in crashes where they've killed somebody either under the influence or people who have lost people, uh, people who have lost family members, who have died from people who are under the influence, uh, I think they would be in full support of this. A lot of, a lot, there's a lot of negativ negativity around the DUI checkpoints nowadays, and we're not going out there 
trying to bust people or trying to bother them or annoy them. It's about saving people's lives and saving their families a lot of heartache. And I think that those people become passionately in favor, at least the ones that I've seen are just passionately in favor of this because they know the impact that it has. And many times what you do will never be seen because there's never a story that says, you know, Joe Blow was taken off the street and he did not hit somebody today. It's always a story of somebody who is hit. And so, you know, in many ways, no news is good news when you're talking about what you're doing because if we can get through these holidays without having those stories, that's really what our goal is. If we had never have another DUI fatality or another DUI, it's a good day. It certainly is. So, well, we're going to continue doing what we can from our office, and I, I appreciate the cooperation that we continually have with the DA's office here in Lackawanna County and across the region. You guys are, are always extremely cooperative, extremely helpful to us, and so we appreciate that very much. On behalf of Michael Toledo, who is our safety press officer, um, we'll continue to do what we can to get that message out. Thank you for the work that the DA's office does. And on behalf of PENDA and everybody within Lackawanna County DA's, DA's office, have a very happy holiday from now all the way through Christmas and New Year's, and please be safe when you're on the roads.